Welcome to the Barrel Spit Podcast, where we help you to explore your capacity to move better, push further, and achieve your limitless potential through fitness, nutrition, recovery, and lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome back to the Barrel Spit Podcast. Uh, great to be with you guys again. I am here today with one of my top coaches, Alex Wacker Benuelos. Did I say that right? That was perfect, actually. Uh, and Brandon. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? He's going to be in the background. You can't really hear him, but I'm here. He's a presence. He's a presence that's always felt. <laughs> um, I wanted to bring Alex in today. Uh, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about Alex. So this past year, obviously, with the, with the pandemic and so forth, has been super challenging for Ferris Athletic Club. Um, we've been doing these outdoor classes. And, um, you know, it's tough. It's been tough on people. And we had to bring a, a new coach in. Um, and we needed an experienced coach. Um, and Alex had, had come highly recommended to me. And from day one, day one, this guy was like, like he'd always been here. He was like, everyone loved him. He picked everything up super quick. He had the personality, he had the coaching skills. Um, and he has never complained. He's been doing it every morning since he started. And it's just been a fucking joy. Um, it's been a huge relief, a huge joy. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for coming in and, and saving us all. You've done such a good job. Um, so I wanted to start with that. Oh, thank you guys, man, for having me. Seriously, this is honestly the best thing that's ever happened to me. You guys just giving me opportunity to actually do what I do and just love it. Yeah. Just love and it. So what I want to kind of like talk about in the first instance today is like, Find out like where 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 it came from. As in, what's your background with this? How did you grow up? What were your backgrounds in sports? How did you become such a good coach? And I don't mean that from like a technical standpoint. As how did you learn how to squat properly? I mean like your personality, the way that you engage with people, the way that everyone feels comfortable around you. Where did that all Where did it all come from? Because for, for me, that's the most important thing about coaching. Yeah, um, I guess uh, starting working with kids first. Right. You know, I started off uh, back in '98. Uh, I was still in high school, so I was still in high school. Now my little brother was growing up. Um, our dad, my our dad, left when I was 13 years old, so I had to pick that role real quick. Um, and then seeing that for me to stay out of trouble growing up in South Central, I had to jump in doing sports early, and then how to transfer over to helping out my brother too. Mm. So taking care of him and doing all that stuff. So working with kids, making sure they're having a great time, having a blast every single day they show up. Not because they're being forced, because they want to. So right. that's, I guess that's where it came from. And then since then, still working with kids to this yeah. day. That's great. So. And what kind of sports when you were like, your introduction to coaching came through various sports, right? Before you became like, before it became your career, it was yes. kind of like your hobby to coach. Yes, yes, yes. Kids. And what, what kind of sports were you doing? Um, football. I started off with football. Um, that's where, or any any sport that was available in our in our area. So it was football season. Football came first. Yeah. Then it was baseball. Baseball season came first. I tried soccer. Soccer. And I was really bad at it. <laughs> so that quick three sixty turned away from that or one eighty I should say and never came back to that. Um, but it was mostly football, mostly baseball growing up. And then um, once I hit college, uh, I tried to play football in college and that was no go. Right. Uh, Got hurt, didn't go back. Because the standard was just too high? or Yeah, being a small Hispanic guy, being at 5'11", still considered right. small, um, and not so fast, I guess. It was just competing against these big guys was just really impossible for me. Right. So got injured, got a concussion, actually, my third concussion. Oh, yeah. So that sounds like no more. No more of that. How old were you then? I was 18. Oh, shit. 18 with three concussions in college, first year. Oh, wow. Yeah. You seen that film Concussion with Will Smith? No, I haven't actually. It's really I good. watched the other day. It's frightening. Yeah. It's good and it's frightening. He's great in it. It's a very kind of like eye opening, educational slash, you know, terrifying. Not just, you know, what's happening, but, you know, how it was like covered up and how they tried to, like, you know, I got to check try it out. and say, like, this isn't the thing. And it obviously is a thing. <laughs> it's pretty scary. But it's another oh, one man. of those. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very kind of revealing, eye opening movie. So yeah, you should watch it, especially if you've had three concussions. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the the basic thing in the film is it's saying like, if you if you grew up playing football and you played football through college and then you went into the NFL, you've been you've been like playing football since you were like six years old and you've had so many head traumas by you know the time you're in careers like thousands and thousands of thousands, like the accumulation of all that, you know. Yeah. It's gonna cause a problem. Like that's that's kind of the 
the central thing of the whole film and then obviously like the, the evidence behind it and the science behind it and stuff it's it's a it's a good watch you should check it i out. gotta check it out for sure yeah. um and then you know in terms of like your sporting so you were coaching these things and were you playing sports after college or what so, happened between college and yeah you? after well soon as that my whole football career was over i was like um i'm not gonna go back to school i'm done you know so sports was the only thing i wanted to do right Football and baseball were the only things that we grew up with, and there was nothing else before me until um, I hit went to community college just, just to get some classes done and got introduced to swimming. Wow. Age 19, got introduced to swimming, swam um, all four years, five years. So oh, wow. community college, swam, got a scholarship, went to the east side. Uh, so I went to New Jersey to swim on a scholarship for swimming. Oh, wow. I got too that. cold and I came back. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it, uh, the cold weather. So, yeah, I swam. And then that's when I came back. And then that's when I said, you know what? I'm going to start coaching swimming now. So I guess it's every sport that I've tried or that I was involved with. That's what I wanted to push to the kids. Seeing, knowing where I grew up, South Central, there was nothing but either drugs, gangs, or your sports. sports. Yeah. And that's all it was. So my mom was really like... You're going to sports no matter what. I don't care what you're doing. So tried the whole swimming thing, did great, came back home. And then after that, I was like, okay, what else is next? So triathlon was next. So oh, I was coaching okay. kids, swim team. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to try some triathlons. And then I tried. I started a program over in West Hollywood Pool uh, for for triathlon. West Hollywood triathletes. Triathletes, that's what they were called. West Hollywood from, triathletes. Yeah. Oh, wow. From eight years old to 14. And these kids were studs, studs. Um, after that, I guess it was just every little thing, every little thing. So triathlons was after that. And then that's when, after triathlon season was kind of wondering now, I was like, you know, what's, what's next? I want to start doing some other stuff. Then that's when CrossFit came around. Yeah. This was 2012. 2012. 2012. So just before we get into that, so with the tri triathlon stuff, like, what did your weekly training look like? You were like obviously running a lot, cycling a lot, swimming a lot. Yeah, so it was two days off. You had uh, Monday and Friday off, but I would do swim three times a week. I would run two times a week. I would bike four times a week. So sometimes it would be doubles. Early in the morning, go for a swim or yeah. early in the morning, go for your run and vice versa, just switching back and forth. And how did your body respond to that? Like with that kind It of was good. Movement? I was really good with the whole biking and the swimming. Joints were okay until I started introducing more miles. So I went from sprints. Sprints is a 500 meter uh, swim. Then you have a 14 mile bike and then a 5K run at the end, which right. is three point whatever, two miles or 3.1 miles. Um, and then I started introducing more volume. So you know what? I want to go for an Olympic size. That's double the sprint. Yeah. Then I want to go for a half. And then I went for a half. So I did a couple halves. Um, I did, um, I want to say seven half Ironmans. And then he was like, you know what? I'm going to step it up to an Ironman, a full, full Ironman. Yeah. That's 1.4 mile swim, I believe. 1.4, I think. Don't quote me on that one, but yeah, I think so. Um, and then it was like 114 mile bike ride and then the marathon at the end. So training to that, um, joints weren't feeling anywhere. Right. Knees were just hurting so bad. Yeah. Um, plantar fasciitis was coming out, and I was like, there's no way. So that's when I said, you know what? I started to start adding some strength program to, right. my, to my routine. Mm. So that's when I stepped into the gym, to a CrossFit gym. I was like, hmm. well, actually, no, I'm lying. I went into a gold gym first. Yeah. But that whole time that I was at a gold gym, maybe six months in, I was cycling classes every morning at 6 a.m. So I would go you, straight you, to a spin class. You were coaching them? Oh, you were no. taking them? So I took the spin classes first, and then I started coaching. So three months in, I was like, okay, this guy's pretty good. Why don't we just give him a job? So I was literally spin oh, shit. Okay. cycling instructor. So you went there for, for the strength training, but you ended up being a spin, yes. spin coach. Yeah, so there was no strength training at all. It was just more spin <laughs> class than anything else. That's so funny. And did you eventually do any strength training there or not? No. I didn't do any left. strength training. I didn't know what to do, to be honest. Like, right. I was so new to the whole strength training. I didn't know what to do. So yeah. I was like, mm. That's just so true. Of like, I mean, the, the average person that walks into Gold's, gets a membership, has no clue what they're doing. And that's part of the problem, right? They just yeah. end up like walking around for an hour. Yeah. You look at the machines machine. and you're yeah. like, what is that? What is it yeah. for? What is it for? And you see some, some rando who's huge and then just do 
their thing. And I was like, wow, okay, uh, I don't think I could do that. So you get a little intimidated. You move yeah, on to you something get intimidated. Else. And people forget that. Like when, you, when you've been coaching for a long time and you're, you know, you come to a gym like Farrah's, you forget that like most gyms you walk into and you have no clue what you're doing. You just walk around, kind of lost. Uh, and people need help. People need to yeah. be like led and, you know, taken by the hand and say, okay, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. Um, which is, you know, again, we'll talk about CrossFit in a moment, but th that's why, you know, the coaching element of people need to be coached um, really kind of took off because, you know, personal training's been around for a long time, but, you know, obviously personal training was, it's expensive. Not yes. everybody can do it. It's not accessible for everybody. Um, and when group fitness started to become more of a thing and people actually had like quality coaching, it kind of changed the game. And suddenly, you know, people could do this stuff and they could move better and they could squat and they could deadlift and they could do the basic fundamental movements. Yeah. And it kind of changed the game. So tell us how that, how did that happen for you? Where did you start this, this CrossFit journey and how did you even find out about CrossFit? Uh, well, I was working at the pool in West Hollywood and then uh, that's when a couple guys came in to, to the pool. I guess there was an, a big event going on and swimming was involved. Right, it was part of the, so, part of the yes, water or whatever. Yeah, so that, I guess that's in 2012, they started introducing a lot of the swimming. Right. So there was a group of guys and a group of girls who came in and I just looked at them and was like, wow, these people look really, really fit. I was right. so used to looking at speedos and I mean, people in speedos, you know, like <laughs> slim, slender, long arms, long right. legs, which it was fine. Yeah. But then you come in and you see these guys who are just super muscular in yeah. speedos walking yeah. around, women just muscular in their bathing suits. And I was like, wow, what are they doing right. that I'm not doing that so I can look like that? You know, what, yeah. what can I do so I can be in that? So me being so like so open just walk up to the person i just went up to him i was like excuse me uh how do you guys get so big you know <laughs> where do you guys work out you, so know, you walked what do you up guys to a bunch do? of jack dudes and speedos yeah, and yeah said, exactly exactly i went up to him <laughs> and i asked him I was like what do you guys do uh so one of the guys is uh one of the owners uh, at brick and he was told me he's like oh yeah i own this gym why don't you just come down and check it out so i went over checked it out and immediately i took a class and i just fell in love Awesome. It was two coaches on the floor correcting every movement that you were doing. They were on you the whole time. And just the whole community was just like, wow, this is something I want to do. Yeah. So still leading to where I'm going to do my triathlon, my full Ironman. Right. So I was like, this is perfect. This is yeah. the perfect strength training that I can do. Get ready for my whole training. So I started like that. I just got in there. Asked that's him, and I was like, that's I awesome. And again, there. I'll go back to it. That, that's, why, that's why CrossFit was so successful in the beginning because it was – you know, it was coaching, it was atmosphere, it was energy, it was it was new friends, it was, um, you know, a new exciting way of training, and it just yeah. brought a whole new, you know, like I said, a whole new energy to the, to, to, to the fitness. Uh, the whole thing know, the whole that they thing. say, the whole community, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. People, people need that. I, I believe people they do, do need that. It's like once you open the door, it's like, wow, okay, I want to come back to this. I, you know, I was, I was talking about this today with a couple of coaches. It's like, with, with this trend of like everybody like buying equipment for their own home and buying like the mirror or the... What's the fucking cycling thing? Peloton. Peloton. The damn Peloton, yeah. The Peloton is just like, people just like, you know, wanting to like do work from home, work out from home, do everything at home, never see anybody. I'm like, that is not what the gym's all yeah. about. It's all about connection. It's all about social interaction. It's all about seeing people, hanging out with people, like shooting the shit. Yeah, like taking the taking the piss out of each other. What whatever it is, it's like you need that social interaction. The gym is not just weights and barbells. It is people. Yeah, and it's the people that make the difference. Um, so I'm just hoping that I'm hoping that this year was like, oh yeah, I can just train at home. I don't need the gym. And then you do that for like three months. You're like, fuck, I need that yeah. gym. This is boring. It's boring. It, after a while, it's it's just like um, you you lose motivation because. You know, it's all about sharing the journey. Like, if you're just doing the journey on your own all the time, it loses, you know, it loses appeal. It loses its excitement. It's, it's, it becomes way less, you know, effective and, mm -hmm. you know, way less stimulating. And um, for me and for and for Faros and and for you and for all our coaches, you know, we understand that. We we've been through that. We we've seen it. We we know what we need yeah, to, to keep exactly. getting better. Um, and it's the, the, the answer is always people. We need people. Um, and so, you know, I'm hoping that the lesson learned from this year is yes, you can do it at home and it is possible. And we, we do the virtual studio. We, we help people train at home. Um, for, fortunately, the virtual studio does allow for interaction of some sorts. Yeah. But even those people would admit and I'll still admit it's not the same as like 
going to a gym and hanging out with people you want to hang out with and do cool shit. That's true. Um, so yeah, I hope that lesson will be learned from this year and not everyone's like, no, I'll just train at home for the rest of my life. <laughs> now I, I've seen a lot of people like coaching virtual in the beginning too, is like a lot of people's like, I'm ready to, I'm over this. I'm ready to go into the gym. Yeah. I'm ready to go into the gym. Yeah. And then coaching those outdoor classes, you still see people high-fiving themselves on the air. It's like, Oh, high five from a distance. Yay. Yeah. And they're still bantering and giving these yeah, some high fives. Sure. It's great. For so. sure. You, people need that. They yeah. really do need that. Now, with your, with your, I mean, you got super into CrossFit, right? Because you went in there for the strength training for the triathlon, but yeah. then what I happened? Fell out. <laughs> I fell out. So I went in there, started uh, just, you know what? I'm just going to be here just to prepare. My focus was the Ironman and everything. And three months in, it's just like I found myself not getting on the bike anymore. I found myself not swimming anymore, and I wasn't running anymore. So I was like, so you know what? I'm going to go hard on this uh, CrossFit thing. I'm having fun. I'm moving well. There's no injuries. Why not? Just go with it. Yeah. So I fell in love with it right away. Being new to lifting weights. And I mean, walking in in the beginning, seeing a lot of people throw weight, being loud and everything kind of did kind of like scare me a little bit. But then being part of it, it was like, wow, I fucking want to do this. I want to drop all these weights. So I love that. So that's why I was like, "Uh, no more Ironman for me. I'm just going to go and gun hole on this CrossFit stuff. Let me just go back a little bit. So... Up until this point, you never really squatted properly. You never really deadlifted properly. Last so when you were playing football in college and stuff, they didn't teach you that shit? So in high school, I was supposed to, this is a funny, you're going to hate me for this one, but during gym time, right? So you have to go in gym time before season started, whatever it is, you had to put in your reps. We had to join a, a ten, uh, is it a thousand mile club, club or something? A thousand pound club, something like that, right? Right. So you go in, you check in through the front door, you write your name. Oh, Alex Guanyolos was in here. Boom. He's put it in. Go, go do your workout. There was a back door. There was a back door, and I would literally check in and sneak out from the back. Like, I would not work out. I would not work out at all. I just did not like it. I just wanted to hang out with the girls outside, to be honest. Right. So come test day, yeah, you had – I was a linebacker in high school. So Mm -hmm. linebackers were up. All right, line up, linebackers. Let's go. Let's bench press. You have my teammates benching 230, 255, and these kids are like 16 years old. All right, here comes Alex, 17 years old. 135 pounds, <laughs> 135 pounds struggling for one. Oh, and man, back squat came around no more than 185 pounds. It was yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. It was embarrassing. So I never really liked the gym. Right, I never right. really liked working out. I never liked the weights. That's interesting. And then, so it wasn't until like you found the CrossFit thing that you started to enjoy it. That's when I started enjoying Well, during college, the only machine that I actually used for strength training was the bad girl good girl machine. oh yeah yeah yeah. that's the only one machine that i used i was a breast stroker so that's the only machine that i ended up using so i was in oh, there just God. going back and forth with the legs just looking around and <laughs> women would come up to me and say excuse me are you done with that thing i was like just give me one more set and that was it um but yeah ever before that there was nothing else man no no weight training oh, none God, of that. that's hilarious that's great um so you're lifting, you're, you're, you're getting into your strength training. And then, I mean, you started competing, right? You started getting really good at CrossFit. Yes, I started really good. Um, I actually got invited 2013 to be part of the team or you training with the team. And I was just chasing these guys. Yeah. Competing. I was doing uh, local events, doing really well in local events. And just my goal was always regionals, regionals, regionals. Finally, finally made one team one day, one year. And it was just great. Awesome. So, what year was that? Oh, I want to say 2016, the year my day. Yeah, 2016. 2016. So you, you, you joined a team and you competed. Yeah. So I was, you went my to goal the games, was, or? no, no, we no. didn't go to the games. I didn't go to the games. No, you went I was to just the, regionals. You competed yes. in regionals. The last regionals. Awesome. I think that's what it was. Oh the last yeah. Last yeah. regionals before they cut them. Yeah. Yeah. And what was that experience like? Oh, it was great. Yeah. Wow. It was just really, really great. Being in the, in the center field. I mean, I've always liked competing, period. Like yeah. competition in anything. I mm. always try to find something. Any little sport I go into is like, oh, I'm going to compete in this. I'm going to see how good I can get, how hard I can push myself. But being in that floor with a lot of people around is yeah. just... It was that just, energy. Oh, God, it was great. Back when you could have crowds. <laughs> uh, yeah, back, yeah, exactly. <laughs> back when you can be really close to each other. Yeah, it was That's great. Awesome. Great experience. Yeah. yeah. And did you... and throughout your kind of crossfit career was like injuries a problem wherever or you were you no it was actually i didn't have a lot of injuries just because i was really mobile due to i'm gonna actually thank uh swimming for this yeah shoulders were great uh legs were great so 
no really big injuries for me. But your, your strength really was Olympic lifting, right? You have you have big numbers on the Olympic lifts. Pretty big, for, decent. For, for not not big, you know? big, but yeah, they're pretty decent. They're yeah. they're they play around, so yeah, I can throw some weight around. I did like when I first started, I was like, okay, I really want to get good at this, so I did hire a coach. Yeah, I hired a coach just for strictly Olympic lifts. Yeah, so snatching and cleaning jerks, let's do this, and I was working with him for six months. Nice. Six months, and then I was really good. I was like, okay, now it's time to work the rest of it. So, and what were your weaknesses? Anything? Uh, gymnastics were yeah. pretty weak for me. Yeah, gymnastics are to this day still. Yeah, but that that was my weaknesses. But still, it's like I still work on them, do whatever. I, I feel comfortable enough where I can just walk up to a bar, snatch it, and walk up to a bar, clean jerk, and squat it if I need yeah. to, like the good weight. I can link up some pull ups. I can link up muscle ups. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, and um. With the CrossFit thing, you, you competed in that in that 2016 regionals, and then was that kind of it for competing after that, or did you keep trying? No, I did try after that. So after I was done with uh, with the team, there was no more team. Um, it was just our gym where we were at. It was like no more. So right. you know, I was like, you know what? I'm 35 or 36. I think I was turning 35, 36. You know, what? I'm gonna go masters and see how far I can mm. really take it. So I really focused on myself. Like I really hit it hard. Um, and I want to see, I was like, I'm going to see how far I can get to. And I was 32 uh, places shy from making it to Masters Regional. So I was really stoked about that. Yeah. So 30, I was 232 in the world. So I'll oh, take cool. that at 36 years old for Masters. And um, did your programming change? Because you were you know, competing in the Masters, maybe a little bit older. Yeah, volume was a little bit less, maybe or? less volume. Yes, yeah. for sure, less volume. Um, people thought I was crazy because I was literally mobilizing for like 40, 45 minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah, and they were like, "What are you doing?" And you have to. Dude. Oh yeah, so forty-five minutes of mobility, and it was no more than fifteen minutes of uh, cardio. That was it. Metcon right. was no more than fifteen. Uh, lifts no more was a five by five or yeah. maybe EMOM or whatever it is, but it was never a high high volume. Right. I was in and out in ninety minutes. Right. With the mobile, with mobility. So yeah. that was it. 90 minutes of just training. Yeah, I think I, I see this a lot with people. The temptation, because there are so many facets of CrossFit. Obviously, there's so many things you need to be good at. Sessions end up being like these three-hour sessions yeah. where they're trying to cram yeah, so yeah, much yeah. in. And especially for masters, guys and girls, when you get a little bit older, like your body just can't take that like it just can't work for three four hours a day no. just pounding 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 you might be good for one or two days but then recovery yeah, it it's like what the yeah, heck yeah. just happened yeah. the, the, the you know the diminish the law of diminishing returns starts yeah. to really kick in <laughs> yeah. and you uh you know you just end up not getting any better and yeah. you probably end up hurt most of the time i see it a lot i think a lot a lot of even like younger younger guys and girls that i see are just doing so much volume now it's like this is this is not good like you can't, your body can't sustain yeah. this for, for long periods of time. Um, and I think it's only was, a certain percentage that can do all that, but yeah. everybody sees it on the whole Instagram and everything's like, whoa, okay, I can do it. And I was yeah. like, whoa. Yeah, people get burnt out yeah. real quick. Fast. I mean, and the other thing is like, you see these athletes do it. Who, this is their job to do it. This is what they do full time. Yeah. So they're getting more rest. They're getting uh, more recovery practices in, which allows them to like have this high volume. Some people are like full-time job, still trying to work out before still trying to work out after some somewhere trying to get some recovery stuff in yeah and it's just it's just yeah, impossible it's impossible and it's... You, you're always going to get like burnt out trying to trying to do that so i think a lot a lot of people do better with like like you're saying like a 90 minute session you're in you get the job done you're out like you, you keep you have progressive overload you have very you know very controlled um time domains uh, in which you work and you kind of like you listen to your body and you spend a lot of time mobilizing yep. and doing all that stuff yeah and just making you sure that your work is very efficient then go um, in and actually it's okay today i'm going to work on muscle ups so really focus on that yeah. or today is snatch day let me work really work on on just specify something that right. you're going to work that day still trying to get and stop trying to get good at everything yes. all, of the time. all at once all, yeah all the same yeah day. yep yeah cool now um at what point in your life, because I know you're a big bow guy, um, what point did the, the, the archery, you know, come into your life? Oh, archery. God, I love archery. <laughs> I know you do. Right? <laughs> uh, three so years. I, I, Alex is basically responsible for getting me into archery. So yeah, this is what sorry, guys. <laughs> um, three years ago, actually, um, my dad passed away in 2016. And our big goal was to like, oh, let's go bow hunting together. Right. 
So we really wanted to do that. And him living in Fresno, he left when he was a long time, but we started keeping in touch. And then we're like, okay, let's get together one year, one year, one year. And that just kept one year and then one year and then one year. And then he passed away and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do stuff now and just not worried about like work, 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 work all the time. Right. Work and play. That's what I'm going to end up doing. So three years ago, I uh, linked up with a buddy of mine who I haven't seen forever. Uh, kid was already, he was already hunting. His name's Steven. So he actually introduced me. He's like, why don't you just come back and I start doing some of this? Bought my bow. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the best one I can afford. Let's go ahead and do it. Took it out, went hunting with him a couple of times. And he was showing me the ropes. Oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do that. It was a short season that year. But then afterwards, it's like, okay, outdoor uh, season is going to come up. Tournaments. So as soon as it said tournaments, my head just went, whoa, compete? We're going to compete? Okay, let's compete. Let's do this. So it's uh, 3D events and everything. And I was like, you know what? This is for me. I love this. Yeah. So being from still doing CrossFit, right? Doing CrossFit, three, two, one, go. And you're like full on 100%. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everything needs to slow down when it comes to archery. Yeah. It's like, okay, now back up slow everything down and just work on breathing and that's yeah. what just got me yeah it's the it's, whole zen the whole like yeah it's totally the opposite oh yes but do you think the crossfit stuff helped you made you a better bowman just because of like yeah um strength. and that, it's not it's not only because of the strength oh i can pull back the boat no it doesn't it's not that it's just more of like slow down focus on what you're doing real quick like you'll get results in a little bit so it's right Basically, okay, after I finished the whole master thing, right? It's like slow everything down, really focus on one thing. When you got into like the whole uh, archery thing, it's the same thing. Focus one step at a time as you guys, as you go. Yeah. So yeah. the whole archery thing was just, wow. And what are your kind of goals with, with archery? What would, you, what would you like to do with it? Oh, man. For one is uh, hunt for sure and actually get an, an animal. Yeah. <laughs> I've been going out three years and it's been getting skunked every year. So yeah. it's tough. Uh, it's tough. It's yeah. so hard. Like these guys, I don't know how, you know, John Dudley and Joe Rogan and all them do it. They just, they know where to be at the, same, at the right place. Here yeah. in California, it's a little harder. I'm going to keep saying that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, future for this, I would be still compete. Um, make it uh, maybe pro. I don't know if I really do want to make, make it pro, but just still keep competing. Yeah. Travel the world. There's a couple of events that I want to do in Montana. There's a huge one that I want to go to. Still, still want to see Montana. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, Utah. There's another one. Um, well, that's the thing with it as well. Like, it's, it's a great way to see the world. Like, or oh, yeah. at least see nature. Like, go to these different states. Get out there in the wilderness. That's a big excuse that's, to go check it out. It for is. Sure. It's yeah. huge. And it's it's there's just something obviously very primal about it. Very very away from you know everything that, that that's going on right now um very kind of like anti-social in the mm -hmm. best way possible like you don't have a television you don't have news you don't like know what's you know all the shit that's happening it's kind of like i'm in nature with a bow it's a very primal thing i'm i'm just a man on a hunt kind yeah of thing. it's you and, and the bow and that's it that's Nothing it else. yeah exactly and i think i think for me and for you and for everybody that that that, that, that does it, it it kind of has this this appeal of simplicity right just like something that you know mankind has been doing for thousands and yeah, thousands and yeah. thousands of years that isn't like corrupted by a bunch of bullshit yeah it's a very simple very primal very instinctive um you know thing um and i think i think that's genuinely the appeal of it um kind of like i kind of see it like the same way that people thought of crossfit in the beginning is like you know Gyms became very uh, machine orientated, very technology uh, orientated in the in the in the nineties and um, late eighties, nineties, um, and it it really at one point went very much away from from primal movements of like the big lifts, the squats, the deadlifts. Uh, yeah, yeah. People started like just doing like machine stuff all the time, and then I think the appeal of CrossFit in the beginning was like it got back to some kind of pr more primal movements. You know, you were just doing barbells and dumbbells and and you you were just like throwing weights around that it wasn't like you know it wasn't technology based yeah um and i think it's the same thing with 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 archery because of course bows are a piece of technology and they're they're, they're somewhat complicated but um i think the in, the 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 appeal there is a very kind of like anti-technology thing of just like i just don't want to deal with all this other shit and i just want to like 
go out in the woods with a bow and shoot something. Yeah. <laughs> and um, like like I said, the CrossFit thing was very much like the same kind of appeal of, I don't want to deal with all this technology. I just want to be in a box with a barbell and just, just throw it around. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it kind of synced up with the whole like paleo diet and caveman diets and all that kind of thing. Because it was this kind of like, let's get away from modern society and everything we, we're kind of being taught right now and get back to some kind of like basic human instinct of, you know, eat real food, lift shit and, and you know, and have fun in nature. Because um, obviously the other thing about the, the CrossFit stuff was like, you know, you're running outside. The, the whole thing was like, be ready for anything anywhere kind of thing. So, you know, swimming outside, riding outside, whatever it was, it's like, you know, it was putting the emphasis back on the outside, on the outdoors, like getting back out there and not just spending your whole life like in a, a gym or, yeah, you know, surrounded by technology. Um, so I'm, I'm always, I'm always interested in kind of anti-technology because it's one of those things like we need it. Obviously we need it to run the business. Um, but I'm a complete technophobe. I, I, I fucking hate it. I hate computers. Uh, I hate my phone. I use it a lot, but I hate it. Yeah. Um, it just feels like it's consuming your life. It just, time, it does. Right? Uh, and I just, I'm just yearning to get back to, to nature. And I know a lot of people out there are, which I think is why you're seeing a big resurgence in, in archery and obviously like Joe Rogan's popularity and stuff like that. Like, a lot more a lot more heads are being turned toward it but i think i think it is this primal thing of just getting back to nature and, and doing something in the real world that doesn't revolve around technology and news and, you know well that's one of the main things what i like about when you go hunting you have no signal right so you're up there you're, you're hunting it's like yeah, yeah. you're gonna you might get eaten again. by a bear true but <laughs> the bank's not gonna call you exactly exactly <laughs> i'd choose the bear over the bank any day <laughs> Oh God, yeah. So I, I, I think it's a, you know, a fascinating movement right now, and you know, I think also, uh, and we can talk a little about this and we'll talk about your new, uh, your new kind of food project. But um, you know, I think there's this big kind of like opposition right now between you know uh, what's best for the planet, like should we go vegan uh, or should we be like getting back to um, responsible farming. Uh, eating like uh, meat that hasn't been factory farmed, mm -hmm. um, regenerative farming techniques, that kind of stuff. And, you know, you have kind of got this weird like opposition because both are sort of saying this is what's best for the planet. Of course, we both know to know what side we're on. Um, but it, it is an interesting kind of time. Um, and I think, you know, with the, the the bow the bow hunting and and that kind of that that primal side of things and you know getting away again from industry and uh, industrial farming and you know the way that animals are slaughtered in that way yeah um it's it, you know there's a big push to get back to kind of like basic farming techniques and like i said regenerative farming and putting um and, and recultivating the topsoil um, and all that kind of stuff so it's it's an interesting time um, and I think a lot of us find ourselves like we want to be responsible as human beings. We want to be, we want the planet to survive and we want to be, we want to be, you know, we want to do our part, but at the same time, like, I'm not going to go vegan. Like, I don't believe it's good for me. So like, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think it's like on us to like do our part in terms of, okay, I, I'm not going to give up plants, but I'm going to move myself in this direction of, I'm going to buy my food responsibly. I'm going to get it directly from the farm. Or I'm gonna try and fucking kill hunt yourself. and kill my animal. yeah, kill it yourself. Um, exactly. So I think there's a temptation for like people to scream at other people, like you're being, you know, you're being irresponsible or you're not doing the right thing, and it's 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 not fair and it's not this and it's that without really thinking about, you know, what's really happening and who the real, you know, what the real problem is, because it's easy to just say, well, if everyone was vegan, then there wouldn't be the the meat problem there wouldn't be the the the, the meat farming problem it's like it's not as simple as that there's a lot of lot a lot lot more that we need to look into when we make these like big claims so i think well even in the states like what well, um there's a documentary out there when yellowstone you know they took all the uh, the wolves off right right and yeah. what happened there was overpopulated with elk and all the vegetation was dying yeah so the same thing they had to introduce wolves to take down some meat than what we're talking about and now the vegetation's a lot beautiful again yeah so yeah exactly we do need to do our part with well there's a big thing i was reading the other day about you know topsoil and and buffalo poop and and yeah, cow poop and how, how how important that poop is for the soil yeah and so forth 
And, you know, on, on the flip side of that, you've got a lot of like soy farming and stuff like that going on, which strips the sort of, you know, nutrients. Um, so it's not as simple as what people make it out to be. Um, and I think like me and you, we're trying to get back to this kind of like how man used to exist like yeah. thousands of years ago. I mean, you know, if you watch alone, <laughs> you watch alone and you're like, there is no way that man survived on plants alone. There is no way because when winter comes around, those plants no don't plants, grow. Yep. Like, what are you uh -huh. going to do? You watch that show and like, you need meat to survive. You need meat, you need protein, you need fat. That is your primary goal is to get protein and to get fat to survive. That's your primary goal. And if you haven't got that, then you're going to die. Yeah. So it's like when you watch stuff like that, it's very, very hard to think, you know, oh, vegan is the way forward. The certain way. Yeah, you're right. You know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting time. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, so on that kind of subject, you know, I, I'm big on getting my, uh, uh, my meat delivered to me. I get, um, I get butcher box and I get vertical diet, which is all grass fed meat. And, and I know you've just started this, this service. Uh, you have, you have your Traeger, you've been out there grilling, 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 yeah. <laughs> and supplying food to your clients and, and so forth. And, and tell us a little bit about that. How did that start and what? Man, what's the, what's so the journey there? I love meat, like you said. I love yeah. meat and I try to make as best meat as I can or whatever I could. But once you got your Traeger, you're the one who opened up the doors for me. So uh, you <laughs> bought your Traeger, you started sending me pictures of your meats. I was like, oh man, I need one of these bad. Yeah. I need money. I've been wanting one. But once you started sending me pictures, like, I need one. I need yeah. one now. So I got that one and I've just been trying everything. Everything, yeah. you know, it's like I'll YouTube some stuff. I'll look on, on Instagram, whatever it is. It's like, I'm going to try to make this. So. And then you did yeah. it for yourself. And then you thought, you know what? Some of my clients need this. Because, you know, I think, uh, again, in, in modern society, a lot of people struggle to eat good food. Because oh, there's yeah. so much shitty food available. So conveniently, they just end up eating shit. It's like, stop doing that. I'll cook for you. I'll bring it in. I'll, uh, you, you know, you'll have grass-fed meat. You'll have your carbs. You'll have your vegetables. Like, I'm going to put it together for you. I'm going to give it to you. It's going to be a lot easier, and it's going to work a hell of a lot better. It was exactly that. Like, yeah. I had a couple of clients who was like, what should I eat? What should I eat? What should I eat? So I'm like, okay, you got to eat this. You got to eat that. You got to eat that. Well, this is my goal. What do I going to eat? And I was like, you know what? You know, let me just cook for you. Right. You know, I'm going to charge you this. Just... Buy my food, buy, well, not my food, buy the food and I'll cook it for you and just pay me for it. Right. And this was going to charge you. And that was it. Yeah. So I, ex I knew exactly what the guy needed. So he needed a certain amount of protein, a certain amount of uh, grains or a certain amount of carbs or whatever it is. And I would break down his meals. Yeah. So the Traeger helped out a lot because it cooked meat a lot faster. It actually cooked vegetables a lot faster. So I was like, mm, this is, this is perfect. So just bringing it in here and just feeding them, it was just like, wow. And the results were dropping fast. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. Proper nutrition, certain, the right macros and all that, which is, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, to be honest, I don't even talk into, like, I, these days when I, when I write about nutrition, I like to t talk in terms of nutrients. I don't even talk about calories anymore. I'm like, you need to make sure you're getting enough nutrients because there's a lot of wasted calories out there. People just eating shit that doesn't give them energy doesn't help their muscles recover doesn't help their brains function it's just yeah. meaningless calories whereas if we focus on eating good nutrients you start to see results which is exactly what's happening with your clients they're starting to eat nutrients that their bodies can actually absorb and use uh, and it's helping them feel better lose weight gain muscle you know all, yeah. all the things that everybody wants to do in the fucking gym uh, exactly, it starts yeah. with, it starts with food yeah, it's it's been going really well. So you can see their bodies changing completely. So it's yeah. exactly that. Like you try to explain someone who's just walking out from the outside. It's like you need to eat this, this on their macros. They're like, well, what the fuck is all yeah, that? It's, Do it's, I go to McDonald's yeah. for it? Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, no. It's like that's where I'm gonna get my calories from. I was like, no. So yeah. that's why I was like, you know what? Let me just cook for you. It's gonna be a lot easier this way. And. It's, been kicking off since so you you bought one traeger and then you bought a second traeger yeah, and now you're trigger. spending it all sundays basically just cooking cooking yeah, cooking right that, well now saturdays i want to oh, take sundays saturday. so all day saturday i'm cooking i'm prepping meal prepping so i went down i went from 24 meals a week to i'm literally cooking almost 100 oh shit almost 100 yeah wow that's great almost 100 meals so it's pretty good and with those two triggers it's fast yeah it's, it's the same it's whether you've got two triggers three triggers four triggers it's the same amount of time you yep. just have to have more more, more stock yeah right? more stock exactly exactly that's great man i i think 
Now, me and Alex have been talking about this, and I think that's going to be um, a huge thing for you because I, there's just so much demand for it. People people want real food again, and they want it to be easily like gettable. Yeah. <laughs> they want to hit it almost like just given to them. Um, and I think um, no, I think it's also one of the thi- one, one of those things. It's very nourishing as a coach to know that you are providing something good, like yeah. something something worthwhile, something meaningful. It's like that I, I'm telling you to eat this stuff and I'm providing it for you, which makes my job as a coach even more complete. Yep. Because yeah. I'm like, it's almost like the full circle of service, right? Well, you also get like, okay, you're coaching for years, right? And you tell him what to eat, what to eat. He's like, I am doing it. I am doing it. I am doing it. And there's no results behind it. Yeah. It's like, what are you really doing? What really are you really eating? So now me providing the food and he's like, oh shit, you're right. And I go, yeah, this is yeah. what you have to eat. And you see it. The body changing right away is like, oh yeah, he's right. This is what I gotta eat. Yeah, this yeah. is what I gotta eat. Yeah, people people notice the difference right away. Um, so tell us about like, so lately I know you've been like, you changed up your training a little bit. You've been kind of on this this bodybuilding kick, and you've been taking like five thousand calories. A yeah, day. <laughs> tell us about that. Because oh it's, God, it's, it's, so it's I thought it was gonna be easy. Uh, just being, it was like, oh, I can eat, I can eat five thousand. Why not? Why not? So um, I started, ever since I started working here, I've been trying to dabble on the whole new machines, you know, it's yeah, like all yeah. CrossFit, CrossFit, CrossFit. Then seeing the bodybuilding machines, it's like, oh, shoot, okay, here comes Pete with his big old arms. Let me see what I can do, you know. Uh, one day I'll try to be like him. Uh, so then I was like, you know what, I'm going to pick these guys' brains. So I asked, I asked you a lot of questions. I have asked, um, I actually have stole some of your programming for myself. So it's yeah, been that's working good. great. Yeah, you should. Um, and just dabble with it and it's just been great like okay now my body's asking for more food so i'm gonna keep eating and keep eating and keep eating so i'm eating 5,000 calories i went from weighing 198 pounds i'm at 208 now and still climbing which is amazing so now i see my body's completely changing and and, um let me tell you guys i saw like a before and after of alex the other day and you know the before was before he started eating 5,000 calories a day and, and doing um, like more CrossFit type workouts and then eating 5,000 a day and doing bodybuilding type workouts. And he looks so much better in the after just from like an aesthetic point of view. Um, even though like the calories have gone up by probably 3,000 calories, yeah, whatever it was. 3, for um, sure. he, you know, he looked he looked leaner yeah. in the 5,000 calories than he did in the two two point two thousand four hundred whatever it was. Um, and it's just it just always reminds you that you know when you when you do the the right kind of training with the right kind of eating it doesn't mean it doesn't mean because you're eating more calories you're going to get fat yeah your yeah, body's yeah. going to use those nutrients for what it wants them for um and it's going to send them to the quote-unquote right places yeah exactly um, you know his stomach looks smaller his chest look bigger his shoulders look bigger his arms look bigger like everything is kind of like distributed yeah as it should the proper they were and should you're, be you're, exactly what what you I mean you're basically fueling your metabolism right your your body's crying out for these nutrients and it's it's and you're feeding it feeding that met- metabolism yeah um how are you feeling in general on it oh super energetic yeah i'm um, waking up at 4 30 every morning before it was like when i was doing the whole crossfit thing and yeah training for crossfit eating a little bit of calories all that i was dragging i was dragging some butt you know i was dragging yeah. my legs uh drinking coffee too much now i'm down to one cup of coffee a day and I feel super energetic. Yeah, that's super great, energetic. Man. I feel stronger. I, I I think like a lot of it is like you just become more anabolic. Like I, I think the temptation when you're doing like a lot of training, like in that CrossFit methodology where you are trying to tick a lot of boxes, at a certain point I think you do get catabolic, right? You start to break down a little bit. Yeah. Whereas now it's like you're eating a ton of calories, you're lifting a ton of volume in the weightlifting volume. Yep. Um, and I, I, I think a lot of what you're doing is, is more anabolic um, and you're getting more rest. Um, you're probably sleeping better. Oh, yeah. Um, sleeping and, a lot better for you sure. Know, you're, obviously, you're paying more attention to, to the diet stuff. And, you know, hormonally, from a hormonal perspective, I just think your body's in, in a better place. Um, you know, less, uh, less cortisol circling so your body, you know, less you know, physical stress. Yeah. Um, and I think it just, especially as we get older, as muscles, guys, how old are you now? You're 39. 39. I'm, I'm, I'm 43. And I just know, like, I can't do the same kind of like volume of, um, like what you would call conditioning type workouts, like those long kind of Metcon type stuff. Like my body just doesn't want to do anymore. I can psychologically make myself do it if I want to, but I'll just lose weight and feel terrible. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if I, if I do more kind of like quote unquote bodybuilding type stuff, 
um, I just find that I can hold more weight, keep hold of more muscle, and just generally feel better. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a really interesting lesson for us to learn. Uh, yeah. Like w listening to our bodies, what we really need to, to keep us like feeling good, um, energized, um, kind of looking the way we want to look. Um, and, and, you know, finding, b keeping an open mind and finding new things and not being like, no, I'm a CrossFit or I just do CrossFit or no, I'm a bodybuilder or I just do bodybuilding. It's like you have to like allow things into your life and allow experiences in and, and, and just try these different things. Yeah. Because you don't want to like, you know, with, with the hunting stuff, it's not like you want to become deconditioned. You don't want to be just, you know, a 240 pound like man who can't move, who's just yeah, super no, big no. and bulky and just can't do anything. You, you, you want to keep some conditioning up. So we're not saying that, but it's like changing your, your workouts slightly and, 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 you know, manipulating sets, reps, exercise choice, all that kind of stuff to really suit what you need right now as a 49 year old man, a 39 year old man. That's what, I mean, that's what I found. You no, I agree. Find... I agree. Totally. A hundred percent. Like there was word, I guess when I was at earlier, you know, I was going for the whole masters 36 years old. I was feeling pretty decent. I was yeah. eating what, maybe 30, 3000 calories. And I felt great. It was so great. But throughout these years, I was like, Whoa, I got to slow down I can't do this. I can't keep up. Yeah. There's no way I can keep up. I wake up the next morning. I was like, Ooh, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. But being here, learning all these new things is like, wow, I'm starting to like this stuff. This is actually yeah. really good. Yeah. And I think like in terms of like, staying consistent it's like you were saying like you might have a great day of working out and then it puts you out for three days yeah 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 <laughs> exactly. you can't, like either mentally or physically you can't get like re-engaged yeah like you're just like oh my god I, I can't whereas this way it's kind of like more like i can do i can do this every day like i can do i can do chest today i can yeah. do back today yeah exactly <laughs> like, I can, I can kind of like manipulate myself. And that's what you, you know? want to do. You want to get up and be like, you know what? I can move today. Well, you know what it is? Yeah. And it's like, you want to look forward to working out. Like yeah. at a certain point, if you wake up dreading working out, there's a fucking problem. Yep. Um, and when you're a competing athlete and you're winning prizes or you're, you're trying to like win a competition, of course, like you're going to have to make that sacrifice. It's like, I got to put my body on the line right now because I want to win this competition. Or yeah. this is my, this is my, if you're a professional, like this is my career. I have to do this. As a, as, a, as a fitnesser, as someone who's just trying to keep fit and, 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 and be healthy and look good, you know, at a certain point, you have to do workouts that you look forward to and that, that aren't going to leave you feeling, fuck, I just don't want to do yeah, this anymore. Like true. you want to you feel good. So, you know, I think we find as we get older, you know, almost workouts find us in a way. Like we have to find the stuff that, that, that works for us physically, mentally, and then keeps us entertained. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying the way that we train is for everybody. Um, and maybe people, some people find, I know they find like Pilates or yoga and they start introducing more of that yeah, into their routine. Yeah. And that's what works for them. Like Dorian Yates, like famously, like gave up bodybuilding and just basically does yoga and Pilates now, whatever. Um, but um, I think there is a point where we, we start to listen more to our bodies and kind of like think, okay, this is what I need right now. This yeah. is what works for me mentally, physically, um, socially. All that kind I guess of stuff. we have to go through the whole grind first, test it all out, and then be like, you do. Yeah, "This is where I'm gonna be. You this do. is where I'm gonna be right now." Yeah, yeah. And like I said, it's not like you you never do that stuff, but it's like, you know, things have their place. You don't yeah. do this all the time. You don't do that all the time. You really like again, we talk about it all the time on this podcast. The hybrid model of like, "Yep, I want to focus on building lean muscle tissue. I want some conditioning. I want some mobility. Like I have to keep everything kind of like in tune." Um, and and for us, that that's kind of. No. And those volume loads were different for everybody. Like some yeah, people want a little yeah. bit more of this. Some people want a little bit more of that. But we have to allow ourselves to, to, to try these different things and to, to, to really find what works for us. Um, to, to keep that longevity, which in the end is the only thing that, that really matters. Like who wants true. to look good for a year and then feel like shit for the rest of their lives? Yeah, like, yeah. That's true. <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay, my man. Uh, where can people reach you? What's your, what's your Instagram? Uh, Coach Walker. So C O A C H and then W A K K A. And is that where people like book you for like personal training and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, you can go through there, book me through training, send me a message, training. On the old DMs. Food now. Yeah, hit me in the old DM for <laughs> <Foods>. sure. Foods. <laughs> but uh, we don't have a we don't have a name yet for the food company. Right? No, we've got, we got to think about this. It's gonna be important. It is. It's Wacker Fit is the fitness stuff, so maybe it's Wacker Yeah, hashtag Wacker Fit. Mostly Wacker Fit Foods. You can be there too. 
we'll figure we'll it out. We'll come with something better. Yeah, we'll yeah. come up with something better. Okay, my man. Well, thanks so much for coming today. Um, that was great. I, uh, I find you a, a fantastic person to be around. I love spending time with you. I love that you're a fast athletic club. And I know you're going to be a big part of this company as we move forward. So um, thanks again for the man. Thank you, man. I'm here for the long haul. You know that. Love it. <laughs> thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Take care.